Uh, in the first video, I recommend that you have a basic knowledge of Linux and computer networking. If you don't, it's going to be pretty difficult. Um, now again, this, this process works with Ubuntu and Debye, and I specifically am using a Raspberry Pi to do this uh, with Raspbian, which is a version of the bind, if I'm not mistaken. But the process should be the exact same for anyone who's using Ubuntu. Um, now I'm actually puttied in to my Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm not using a virtual machine or anything. Um, but the process should be the exact same as if you are sitting in front of your VPN server with a keyboard and a uh, monitor hooked up directly to it. It's very useful because I can copy and paste commands to and from the uh, machine uh, remotely. Now, PPTP isn't super secure, so I don't recommend it if you're going to uh, be transferring any sensitive information, if your clients have sensitive information on them, or if the network you're hooking the VPN server up to has sensitive stuff on it. Uh, so, you know, just uh, be aware of that. So the first thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to go over this list of things to do here. Um, we need to install something called PPTPD, which is the actual uh, server process that runs that server. Um, then we need to set up some network configuration. We need to make a static IP. We don't need to, but it's really a good idea. I heavily recommend it. And then just edit our config files to uh, reflect what settings we want. And then edit, <coughs> excuse me, that, um, install and configure UFW, which is a firewall utility to keep the server secure. Again, that's also optional. You can turn the firewall off, but that's horribly insecure. And then you're going to need to port forward your server to the internet. So um, I already ran sudo apt-get update, which is pretty important to do that. Um, and after you've done that, you can do sudo apt-get install pptpd. It will take me a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the video. Next, we need to determine what we're going to do with the uh, network configuration. Uh, I'm going to give my server a static IP, which is a really good idea. Um, and then I'm going to use bridge mode to attach clients to it versus network address translation. Now, with bridge mode, the way it works is that your VPN server has an address like that. And the clients get addresses in the same subnet, the subnet being this part of the address, as your VPN server. So they're on the same network pretty much, uh, just basically running alongside the VPN server as if they were machines running right next to it, uh, or at least plugged into the same switch or router, you know, not above or below any other network infrastructure. Whereas network address translation um, would run such that the VPN server has its own address, but then it kind of has its own little bubble where it makes its own network inside of it, and then the clients will get put into that network on an IP address that looks like, you know, 10.0.0. something, um, which is a little bit more complex, and I'm not going to go into that too much because it's pretty difficult to do because you have to um, do some different routing policies in your VPN server to link the networks, but it is more secure, so if you want to look into that, you can do that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set up the static IP. Now, the way you do that is you go to sudo nano etc network interfaces. Okay. Now, this is what the interfaces file looks like for a Raspberry Pi. Chances are you're not going to see any of this here. It's just going to be either just this or this and this. Um, you want to make it look, you know, this middle line down here isn't going to be here for you, unless you're also using Raspberry Pi. Um, but you want to make, you don't want to touch auto LO. You don't want to touch these two lines. And you want to make sure auto ETH0 is there. If it's not with this line down here, looking like this. And then, now we're going to determine what address we're going to give our VPN server. I'm going to give it an address of 220. I could give an address of 2, but that's a pretty horrible idea because my, my gateway address is 0 0.1. So if I, were, if I were to give a static IP of 0 0.2 to my VPN server, what would happen is that the uh, gateway would most likely try to assign the address 0 0.2 to a device that hops on my network at some point, um, and that would make a address conflict here. So to avoid that from happening, I'm just going to give it a nice high address of 220. And then next thing you do is netmask, which is by default 255.255.255.0. And then add a few more lines that aren't, I don't think they're entirely um, 
necessary, but they're good for you to enter. And these might not be the exact same for you. You might have like a 10.0 network, um, or even like a 172.16 through 32 network, but um, I'm, I'm hoping that each of you know how to deal with that. All right, so I think that should be pretty much good. Um, you have address, netmask, network, and broadcast. All right, that should do it. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and restart my Raspberry Pi, which is going to kick me off it, uh, and I'm going to have to reconnect to it with the new IP through Putty. Okay, so we're back. Um, so next thing that we're going to do is we're going to edit this configuration file right here. So I'm going to type in, I need to actually control C it from here, sudo nano that file. And we need to change a few things. Uh, these three lines down here are set to refuse the authentication methods of PAP, CHAP, and MSCHAP. Um, you can leave these uncommented to actually refuse them. But I'm, I'm going to comment them out to make sure that whatever uh, devices we try to connect to the VPN server that might be using PAP, CHAP, or MSCHAP uh, can actually connect to make sure things don't break. And down near the bottom, we need to give um, your VPN server a DNS server so it can resolve domains to IP addresses. If you were to not do this, I think what would happen is your VPN clients, if they tried to go to a domain like google.com, they wouldn't know where that is. So I'm going to give it two servers, 8.8.8.8 and a secondary one, 8.8.4.4. I could also probably just put in the IP address of my a router, but um, these ones work pretty well. These are DNS servers that exist way out on the internet. I think owned by Google, if I'm not mistaken. They're pretty good. Next up, I'm going to edit this configuration file. And we need to make a few changes in here. Um, if you go, where is it? Uh, down near the bottom, yes, right here at the bottom. You can add it up top, or you can just uncomment these lines and change it here. Um, you need to enter the local IP, which is the IP address you gave your VPN server earlier. And then you need to edit the remote IP, which is the IP address or address range that your clients will get, which is what I wrote down up here. So I want my clients to be able to connect to 221 through 225. And make sure it doesn't overlap with here. If you had it set to this, it would break it because the first client to connect would receive 0.220, which is the same address as your server itself so that that would create a conflict and you don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and save and exit out of that as soon as you enter your settings there. Um, and next thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to edit the uh, chap secrets file which is pretty much um, just the file of clients and their passwords. So the first thing well, you have to enter four different fields in this file. Client, server, secret, and IP address. So that means is that um, you have to enter the client name, so I'm going to say VPN user 1. The server, which is PPTPD, which is the uh, name of your server, because and that's that's the default. So you 99% chance that's where you're going to need to enter, unless you went into these other configuration files and for some reason changed the server name from default. Then you need to enter the secret, which is the password for the user. Which I'm just going to make password. And then, yeah, then the IP addresses. So you can just put an asterisk if you want any address within your chosen range to be uh, given out to anyone who connects under that username. But I'm going to make it so that you just type in this address so that any any user, anytime this user, VPN user 1, connects, they always get 221. Anytime VPN user 2 connects, they get 222. This is, this is useful because if you're running server-side processes through this VPN server, um, you can make one computer always use this login, one computer always uses other login, and they each always get their own IP on the network instead of swapping around if you had asterisks in both depending on which one's connected when. Uh, and then the last thing we need to do for this little bit is to edit this file here. Now this is a system file. This isn't part of PPTPD or anything, um, but it's a file that tells the machine whether or not it can forward IPv4 traffic. 
um, I guess outside of its subnet. I'm not entirely sure, but pretty much if you don't if you don't uncomment that line, your VPN servers might not or your VPN clients, I'm sorry, might not um, be able to get their traffic to come out to uh, the network that they're get they're, that they're going on, or they might not be able to get out to the internet. So at this point, uh, you can just reboot and your VPN server should be functional, but um, we want a firewall. And I don't think I have a uh, UFW installed right now. You can tell by typing UFW. If it says command not found, that means you don't have it. If it says um, not enough arguments, that means you have it, but you're not actually configuring it that, at that moment. So I'm going to install UFW, and of course your, your server functions at this point um, without any firewall, but it's really not a good idea to use no firewall. I think by default on Ubuntu, uh, UFW is installed, so you'd have to disable it to be able to actually get to your Raspberry Pi unless you do all this down here. Okay, so to start configuring our um, firewall, we're going to enter these uh, commands up here. We're going to do sudo gfw allow 47 and sudo ufw allow 1723. I'm also going to put in 22 because 22 is what SSH runs over and I'm using SSH to access my VPN server to do this setup. Um, I don't want to cut that out when I do sudo ufw enable which is found right here. Now, if you're using network address translation, uh, you're going to have to do some pretty funky stuff with forwarding traffic, as I mentioned earlier, but I'm not going to go into that, assuming that you're just using bridge mode. So next, what we need to do is we need to edit this file right here. We need to change this line down here to default forward policy equals accept. Uh, did I just go past it? Yes, I did. Accept. All right, now I'll accept your connections. And then you need to go down here and edit this file. Okay, and you just need to go ahead and paste this stuff in somewhere near the top. I'm going to put it just for organizational purposes under this commented out section. Let's remove the tabs before it, or the indents, I mean. Okay, and then you also need to put this line um, right before the drop invalid packets part, so like right, right here. Okay. Now you should be able to do just a pseudo reboot to apply all the changes you just made, and your VPN server should be functional um, fairly soon. At least it should be functional from your own subnet until you port forward to your uh, VPN server from your gateway, at which point it'll be accessible from the internet. Okay, so we're back up. So if I go ahead and in, in Windows here, um, I'm running this uh, computer here on the same network as my VPN server is running on, so I can connect over the same subnet just to test if the server itself works. I can go ahead and I can go to uh, I can go to let's see system settings and search for VPN. I can add a VPN connection. I'll go ahead and call it test. Oops. I'll point it towards the VPN server I just created, which is on my same network, hence why this is an internal IP. It's PPTP, using the password, uh, VPN user one, and password. That should allow me to connect it, or connect to it. Alright, I'm connected. So the server itself works. If I go to IP config, uh, we can see that if we go to the PPT, or excuse me, PPP adapter, it's given me the address that corresponds with that user created in the user file. Now, um, that doesn't do a whole lot for me, though, if I actually want to use the server for real purposes. Right now, however, your VPN server is not accessible from the internet, because what, what you need to do is you, you need to port forward your router so that your connections coming out from the internet can be routed to the internal IP of your VPN server on port 47.17.23. 
Uh, you should know, already know how to do this if you have a basic networking knowledge, but if you don't, you put in the gateway IP of your, uh, or the IP of your gateway, I'm sorry, or your router pretty much, in the URL bar of your web browser, assuming that you're using a computer on your local area network. And then you have to log in, uh, and then you go to whatever part of your menu here allows you to do the port forwarding, or virtual server forwarding, it's sometimes called. Uh, and then you, you need to pour, you need to port forward ports 17, 23, and 47 to the internal IP address of your VPN server. And uh, it looks kind of like this. So I'd put in 1723, internal port, same thing. I can just leave it blank because it's the same thing. Um, to the internal IP protocol, both TCP and UDP. I just hit save, but I, I, I already did that. So you do that for port 17, 23, and 47. Once you do that, you should be able to enter the external IP of your network from you know some location out in the internet and connect to your VPN server successfully. So that pretty much sums it up for this entire video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the description. There's also tons of guides online as to how to do this sort of setup for a uh, PPTP. But um, I hope you all found this video informative and useful, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it.